Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. You like our new visuals? Live from Harlem in New York, it's the Ramble with me, Alex Bennett. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that's Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, she used to be the, uh, the news reader on our program in San Francisco, but she was more than that. She was kind of my other, my aide-de-camp, you know. She, I'd bounce stuff off of her when there were no comedians in the room, you know. And, but that was so fun. I mean, it is so fun. She, she won, <laughs> she's not one of, she is the best person I ever worked with, you know. I mean, That's not. I, I, I mean, I have a great producer. My best producer ever is a guy by the name of uh, um, uh, Reynoso. Um, was that in New York? In, uh, yeah, at the uh, at the live at Sirius XM, uh, I have a hard time remembering names. What is? I mean, I, I said Renoso, but I can't remember his first name. Uh, Albert. Albert Renoso, right? Mm -hmm. See what's happening to me at my age. <laughs> you, you finally live to see it, right? Right. You, and and yeah. the other the other thing about getting older is you see things that you bought new. On vintage websites, vintage, yeah, <laughs> Ray Ban, yeah, vintage but, Maui. But forgetting names, I mean, I, how I could forget Albert's first name is beyond me. I mean, you even knew it, and you never met the guy. I don't think. I think I met him once because when you would come to San Francisco, sometimes I would. You would oh invite yeah, when me on we came show. to San Francisco because I was being installed in the Bay Area Radio Hall of Fame thing. Right. Which is yeah, a piece of mimeograph paper you get. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he came with me, and we did shows from there, and you were on those shows, and that's when you met yeah. Albert. He was the uh, he's the best I ever had. Just you know, I didn't know what it was like to have a real professional producer. Uh, you know, I had nice people who were producers for me, but this guy was a professional. Mm -hmm. Every morning yeah. I'd come in, there was a. There was a sheet on there with all the news from the day in small, concise things. It was his prep sheet for me. I mean, it was just there right on the table when I got there. You know? That is I mean, very, that's pro. Cool. That's pro. You know? Yeah. I said, first yeah. day he did it, I said, what's this? He says, that's your prep sheet. I said, what? He said, nobody ever did this for me. He said, what kind of producers <laughs> did you have? You know. But, yeah. I, that was fun when you got inducted into that um the the uh what is that i can't the remember hall, the, the yeah the bay area but, hall yeah the bay, bay yeah. area barhoff they call it barhoff yeah um yeah. yeah and uh it was fun i remember there's a good picture of us i was wearing this green dress and i didn't it was daytime and i looked at it and i thought that is a little uh too nighttime in the picture, I didn't realize it at the time because it was a fun event and it was, you know, kind yeah. of celebratory. Well, it was very, you know, it was very nice. I mean, I wish I had won the uh, National Hall of Fame, which I was up for a couple of years yeah. back. Yeah. And where is it based? Uh, it, it's based out of they kind of out of New York, and they hold it uh, the uh, festivities in Chicago. Hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a, a, the National Radio Hall of Fame. Uh, which I should probably be in, but no, some two doofuses who I never heard of team Bob down in, you no, know, you know, it's typical crap morning team down in Philadelphia won it mm -hmm. because a lot of people voted for them because they That's were right. on the air and I wasn't. I didn't have a show yeah. anymore. So I couldn't like, you know, all I could do is ask my 200 people who watch me doing this, to, to write in, you know, to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's all gimmick. You it's know what got, got me, though, about the, about the Bay Area Hall of Fame people? They started a new award called the Sherwood Award. On Sherwood. Yeah, which was based on Don Sherwood, who was, I guess if I said anybody was a 
a major influence on me, it was Don Sherwood. I woke up every morning li listening to Don Sherwood. We always hear about Jimmy Kimmel and his love for David Letterman. If I had an equivalent, it was my love for Don Sherwood. I just listened to him every morning. I heard what he did. I liked what he did as a broadcaster. He was unpredictable. You didn't know what he was going to do next. You didn't know what trouble he was going to get into. You know, <laughs> just by doing outrageous and things. I, and I and and one day I remember when I was a kid, I wrote him and I said, "I would like to come down and watch you do your show." And they wrote back and said, "Sure, come on down. Here, here's that here's a day. Amazing. Here's a time." And I went to, over to KSFO, which was. Uh, then in the Fairmont Hotel, and uh, was it KSFO? Yeah, it was KSFO he was on. And uh, there he was doing his show, and I watched him do his show, and he was, yeah. he was a major influence on me. So they started the Sherwood Award. And I'm going, okay, you do a Sherwood Award, what should it be for? Oh, it should be for the most innovative broadcaster of the year, or yeah. whatever. Instead, it's people who vote for their favorite disc jockey. Boring. You know, which I've got to tell you, if you're listening, Bay Area Hall of Fame, if Don Sherwood were alive, he'd say, take my name off of that. <laughs> he would. It's you not know, this, was, this is not, you know, this is not what Sherwood was about. He, he, he would have just eschewed... Uh, any kind of popularity contest that would bother yeah. him okay yeah because they can be so fixed you mm -hmm. know people voting hundreds of times especially now that everything's online yeah it's it's not it yeah i mean so it's just a stupid award and i just think they should respect don sherwood a little more and that award should be given to somebody in the history of san francisco broadcasting who innovated or who moved the moved the uh, uh the goalpost you know, yeah. Um, yeah. And, well, Dr. John Rose was rather influential too. I mean, he uh, he did a radio kind of radio. Well, sound I don't know if he was influential though. He didn't do he anything. He wasn't. He didn't do I anything unusual. No, he, he was did good. He was of, a really good disc jockey and very popular. Yeah. You know. And he did that wacky sound effect stuff. Yeah. Kind of like Jim Kramer on uh, CNBC. He was your typical morning zoo kind of show, mm -hmm. you know, which is exactly the opposite of anything I wanted to do. You know, yeah. I didn't want my morning show to sound like any other morning show in the business. And I think and we then, accomplished it. Definitely. I yeah. was thinking about that the other day, and that's why it was so fun. Everything we kind of, you know, we tried you, to. You, you know what I really, day. what I really wanted was the same thing that I found in Don Sherwood, which was, an, I, a, you wanted to listen every day to see what was happening next to Alex Bennett and his, and his crew. You know <laughs> what kind of misadventures yeah. we had, or what I did that got me into trouble last night, or what what restaurant I went to that served me badly. Or whatever, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so I, that, I wanted the same kind of show where maybe some other kid was listening to me growing up and saying, hey, I'd really like to do that, you know. Yeah, inspiring. I mean, that's, you know, that's an overused Hallmark kind of word, but it's wonderful. Being inspired is one of the most wonderful feelings ever. I'm trying to remember the name of the asshole who I inspired, <laughs> however. And he told, he said it to Bill Maher when he was being interviewed by Bill Maher that I grew up listening to Alex Bennett. Do you know who Alex Bennett was? Blah, blah, blah. And this is a guy on Fox who has a nighttime show. I'm trying to remember his name now. Hannity? No, no, not Hannity. He's, he kind of thinks of himself as funny. Oh, oh. And I went, I influenced that? Really? You know, I'm, yeah. Now I'm curious about who this is. Because I don't watch Fox. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me look up Fox here. <laughs> That's interesting. The Fox T Fox News. Fox News. Um, well, Fox. I, I love reading books about the Bay Area during certain periods, mainly the 90s and the 80s, um, because we were there and we listened, you know, to the, the zeitgeist and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, yeah. the things that were going on. Excuse and me. That, I, that's why... Occasionally, names pop up of people we know 
Patton Oswalt wrote one about movies and how movies have affected his life. Yeah. And it was real good. I, I finished it about a month ago and it was just, it was like, oh, Patton's written a book and he's a good writer. And it was just nice to see someone that we knew yeah. from the beginning started oh, yeah. out. Pa pa I remember his first time I, on the show. I can't find his name here. I'm on. I'm on Fox. Maybe he got the kaboot. Fox News. Uh, it doesn't say their schedule. I'm looking for their schedule. There. Um. I do. They do seem to do a lot of shuffling over there. And on CNBC, the females on that show are on that network are always pregnant. I swear. Mm -hmm. They're always pregnant. It's like this contagion that goes throughout mm. the female anchor force. Anyway, like, anyway you were, uh, I don't want to, I'll, I'll get the name later. I don't want to spell okay. it. But you yeah, were talking so, about Patton Oswald. Yeah. Uh, he uh, did a very nice thing for me. Um, I, one day my phone rings in San Francisco and I pick it up. He says, hi, Alex, this is Patton Oswald. I said, Patton, how are you? He said, well, I'm in San Francisco because I'm doing a special for HBO. And I said, terrific, that's wonderful. He said, I wanted to call up and just thank you because everything I am, I owe to you. Man, that is high praise. He is just, to me, he is just a constantly thoughtful and uh, just very cool I, I you know I uh, but I always felt that was one of the nicest things any of these comics did for me because I had very few comics ever thank me for what I did for them yeah you know yeah. I mean uh, Bob Goldthwaite in fact said terrible things about me why exactly yeah. I was doing I, uh, I was doing uh, one of those you know HBO comedy shows what was it? one night stand Yes. Okay. I was, I, it wasn't that I was emceeing it. I was doing the warm up. Okay. Mm -hmm. and this I was remember. like a second, it right? was a second run of those HBO shows that they did in San Francisco. And so I was there and Bob Goldthwaite was on the show. You know, so I went backstage and I went to see Bob and I said, Bob, how are you? And he go, Alex, how are you? And we hug him, everything. We're really wonderful with each other, okay? Yeah. He said, gee, thanks for coming by and saying hello. I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing the warm-up here. And he said, yeah. Uh, he said, but he said, just uh, good seeing you. And he was, it was just really nice and warm. So now I go in the uh, control room to watch the show with Bob, okay? And he gets on, and the first 10 minutes of his act is eviscerating me. Why? How? I don't have the, I, you know, I can, I can name a lot of people who hate me, okay? For <laughs> one reason or another, and I think it's okay if you hate me, you know, because I deserve, them. you know, I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm, uh, I'm that way. And, um, but you just eviscerated me. And I'm going, do I deserve this? By the way, we're on the sink act, now. He was what? eviscerating you? Yeah. He just got up and did 10 minutes on me, which, of course, never made it into the show because the, the, the producers went, what's this all about? They're not going to know who Alex Bennett is in Omaha. No. <laughs> you know, and he's just putting me down for the first 10 minutes of his show. That is just odd yeah, I be just, odd yeah, you know I, well I felt very hurt by it I know. would imagine huh? especially just on the heels of this warm reception that's just like what excuse and me I'm gonna, I'm gonna change pictures here folks there we oh. go so now we're more in sync oh I have good. This problem all the time. but anyway he eviscerated me and I could never figure that one out never did you talk to him after no no I, I was too hurt to do that, you wow. know. And I never did anything to, I, uh, I, you know, I I fed him when he was broke in San Francisco. You know, I did it. I made I made him I made him a literal star in San Francisco. You yeah. Know, by, well, I figure he made himself a star by his sheer talent, and I it was you. fine, wonderful that it happened on my show. But I gave him the opportunity. The venue, the uh, yeah, launch. and then to go up and do that, I'm going, why? That's just weird, you man. Know? That's weird. And I've never talked to him since. 
Yeah. And I don't want it. No need to. Yeah. So you know what? The word I was trying to think of with Pat describing it, he is a person who appreciates. And, you know, he remembers and he appreciates. Which yeah. I'm beginning to I would love to have him on the, on this show, but unfortunately, I don't know how to get a hold of him. You know, I know. Well, now with you know, with self, we used to have people in the '80s. We had people with landlines, and then we started getting a, their cell phone numbers. Well, no, here's what but, I found. Here's what I found. If let's say there's a Patton Oswalt, and you have him on your show, and you have his phone number in your phone book, okay, cool. Yeah. We're talking cool already. <laughs> then you don't talk to him for two years. That phone doesn't work anymore, and there's no way of getting a hold of him. And if you do get a hold of him, it's some assistant yeah. who then is trying to protect him from the public. And I said, I am an old friend of Patton's, and he used to do my show in San Francisco, and I'd love to talk to him. Well, I'll let Patton know. And then he never does. Okay? Yeah. So it becomes very difficult. And I wish yeah, I had I'll a... Let them I know. wish I had a... Uh, because I'm sure if I asked Patton to do this show, he would, you know. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, he was playing when I was in Bloomington, um, putting reassembling my life um, before my parents died. I was um, he was playing at Illinois West University. And I called and just explained to them that uh, I, you know, I remembered him, how we met. And uh, they they put me on the guest list. I went up to him after and we had a lovely warm you know, warm reunion. Mm -hmm. He's very, he's just cool. He is yeah. Just a good yeah. Guy. But I mean, a, a very nice guy that way, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, um, who else? Uh, oh, um, uh, what's his name who died? Um, not Saget, uh, the other guy. Oh God. I can't remember names anymore. Yeah. Saget was a surprise. I, I, I oh, Saget was a people. great guy. I love Saget. Yeah. Yeah. He was a great guy. Uh, and who, there were so many others that came up. I noticed you're wearing your punchline shirts. Yeah, this is my punchline. Uh, how do you it's notice that? It's closed, though, now. It, it doesn't. It, uh, there we go. No, but I saw the P and I saw that. Oh, there, yeah, I, it's the punchline uh, in San Francisco. I just and have this, this thing about like the And this was like an All-Stars t-shirt. This yeah. one doesn't have my name on it. There's a punchline t-shirt I have that does have my name on it. Well, and the other um, the other thing is, if we had made and I've kept notebooks all of my life, and they all look alike, and they're all this big, and uh, I wrote a lot when I moved to San Francisco, and it would be interesting, and I would write about you know the show and some people we met and stuff like that, and just the events of the day, and I wonder if I made a list, people you think are going to make it, you know, and comics that you think are going to be huge, and then. See how I don't, I found you can never you can never figure that one out. You can't really, See, and I think there were you know within uh, I don't want to call them groupies, but there were some people who hooked up with the comedians on that premise, thinking oh this person's going to be. Cute. There was one comedian we had on who I he was I was okay I didn't hate him or anything, but he, I just didn't think he was much of anything. He came to New York, did a show called, uh, and I'm trying to remember his name now, uh, something. Was it Rob? The Rob, Caveman? Bro, yes. Defending the, Rob Becker. Boy, you knew, knew this one. Rob Becker, <laughs> Defending the Caveman. He winds up on Broadway with this thing as a show. Right. And, and I never considered Becker that funny. I didn't think he had that star quality. So sometimes um, these people that you don't think are going to make it, all of a sudden, what? He's on Broadway? Yeah. Haven't you heard? He's on Broadway. You know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then there are others that you thought were going to be huge, and they were. Dana Gould, you just knew was going to be huge. And I think he sold Defending the Caveman, the rights to it or something, to there, some group who bought it for something like $5 million or an amazing oh, yeah. amount of money. It just takes one hit song or one one man show. Yeah, one one man. It was a one man show, is what it was. So yeah, you and know, he was doing it. He was doing a form yeah. of it in the Bay Area before he left. Yeah, but you know, I mean, there were people in San Francisco comics who were just terrific, just really great. But I that never meant they were going to make it big. I'll give you a good example. We have him on this show once a week, Larry Bubbles Brown. I know. 
Because Bob's, and he's a good character. I love his Bobby Bitter character. The funniest, literally one of the funniest men I've ever known in my life. He should have been a big star. You know yeah, why I, he isn't? He never pushed himself. That's true. You see, he admits it. He admits it. He said, I'm, I've just been lazy all my life. Well, he and I are both from the Midwest. We used to, you know, joke about it, commiserate about it. Mm -hmm. And I think there is just something inherent in people who are raised in that area. We, we don't being pushy is not a, a, an appreciated quality. It's not something that as is uh, people just don't kind of have much use for it right. in, the, in the Midwest. Right. They, it's viewed as aggressive over and just bossy. Yeah. So anyway, so um, uh, he should have made it big. I mean, he was just a, he was great. Yet, you know, he did the Letterman show and he did very well. They said, get another five minutes, come back, do the show again. This is when it was on NBC. It wasn't until he got CB to CBS 20 years later <laughs> that Bubbles gave them another five minutes. I mean, you know, that's right. the kind of like... He just didn't push himself, okay? Another comedian who nobody here knows, except people who listen to my show, who was an absolutely, com you know, very few people I'm gonna call comedic geniuses, but he was, was Jeremy Kramer. Oh, Kramer. <laughs> now, people don't know Jeremy Kramer, okay? But he was amazing and terrific, you know, so. Yeah, and I always thought he would have a great career if he moved to L.A., made movies as a gangster, you know, or some some funny figure on, on the periphery. Kramer would have been good at that. You know yeah. who I miss? Kevin Meany. He's, Kevin Meany was... Kevin Meany was the comedian who, when he started going on a roll, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I would have was, to beg him to stop. Because yeah, my sides like, were my insides were physically aching from laughing. <laughs> I remember one. It was so funny, and we had it on tape. Um, <laughs> it was with Michael Snyder. Yeah, people know who Drake. Michael is because we still have him doing movie reviews on GabNet. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, to this day. That's good. But he started in on Snyder. <laughs> Because and it was so relentless because so, Snyder, I think, in his movie review, tried to do an imitation of Marlon Brando. It was Sean Connery. Or Sean, Sean Connery. Connery yeah. That was it. <laughs> you, see, you have better memory than I do, but then again, you, you're a hundred years Connery. younger than I am. But anyway, and he did Marlon. He did Sean Connery, and Meany starts going. <laughs> Do your Sean Connery again. Do it. Come on. And then, do it, do it, do it. And then Michael <laughs> just stood there not knowing what to say. Anything. Do it. Do it. Do your Sean Connery. Do it again. Come on. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> he went on for 10 minutes going, do it again, do it again, do it again. And by the time, you know, you get to a point where it's not funny anymore. And then you get then to a go. point where it gets incredibly funny. Because yes. it, it, it's just believing in the joke, believing in what you're doing, and then just doing it to death. And that's exactly what he did. And he's doing this to Michael Snyder. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I wish I had a recording of it. I don't. Oh, man. Because it was, I remember we put it on a Best of Bennett. Yeah. And so people could get their tape recorders ready. We, we promoted oh, it that was, way. Yeah, and, and Michael Snyder hated him for that. Just hated him for it. It was one of the funniest things because he really didn't make fun of Michael, but he was definitely, you know. He was making fun of Michael. <laughs> he was making fun of Michael. It was so funny. Do it again. Um, do it again. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come on. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And I don't know if you've ever heard Dana Gould's album, Clown House. Mm. It, I, I, I can still hear it, and it will. Just put me in there was another comic that was a regular on my show. When I say a regular, you have to know I had him on because he was funny. Because he was yeah. good. You know, he was yeah. a good guest. But I couldn't have predicted the pop the, how well he would do. You know, yeah, I, he, that was a, a writer. You know, 
And in the very beginning, I didn't know how good Kevin Pollack would do. I like Kevin. I thought Kevin was a great impersonator and all of that, but I didn't know that he would have a career in movies that exists to this day. And he got nicer the more famous he got. Yes. I mean, yes. which is not true of all people. Yeah, no. He, yeah. It, in the beginning, they're a little insecure, so they're not as nice as when they become secure. Some people. Other people go the yes. other way. They become just total assholes. Yeah. Yeah. But he was, I think he's a great actor. I mean. No, he does a great, a good job. Terrific job. Yeah. He's a, you know, he's what I call a journeyman actor. You know. Yeah. You hire him to do and, a part, he does the part. You know. He, mm -hmm. But, uh, and he's not a big star, but he, I, people know the name and they know the work he's done and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah he did a, a few good men. He did oh, that, yeah, I but think. then most recently he was in Mrs. Maisel. For all yeah, I know. Oh, he was so good as um, Mrs. Maisel's, you know, uh, 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 former fa father. Father-in-law, yeah. Yeah, oh, those, those, that couple was, but all, everybody on that show was Terrific. brilliant. Terrific, Terrific. Yeah, Amy Palladine Sherman, is it? Yeah. Or Sherman Palladino yeah. and her husband, Daniel, right there. Boy, are those birds chirping out there? They are. They are chattering. They are happy it's not raining, man. We got monsooned over the weekend. And it was it was disastrous. But I like the sound of rain if I'm safely inside. Like rain pattering. Oh, no, when you, rain when you're inside is a wonderful feeling. It is. It's just a, it's a reassuring, it's comforting, it's melodic, like yeah. it a lot. Yeah. Oh, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Gosh, I just love this. I, th I th thank you so much for doing it, you know? Oh, Ben, it is my pleasure. I mean, I was so glad when we, you know, started doing this and hooked up again and, and just had a chance to yeah what we do. And now I, I feel like I'm, I'm knowing you all the time now. This is true. This is true. It's amazing what the wonders of Zoom will do. Anyway. <laughs> hey, I'm not out of sync right now either. I stayed out of sync. Stayed in sync. Same. See, I have two different channels that I can use uh, for putting things in sync. And uh, uh, I, so I switch between them, and that's why you see that, folks. See, I take all the magic out of this. I shouldn't have to. <laughs> Anyway. Well, you'll get your fancy new toy. Hey, we'll see. And when you get, well, yeah. And, and, yeah. and then we'll, we can learn all about it again. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same machine. It's just more expensive. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson. We've run over time and everything else, but we love her. Thank you, Lori. My pleasure. See you Mwah. next week. In its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, okay. Thank you very much, Lori Thompson. We appreciate it, and uh, it's uh, it's terrific. Okay, all right. And so anyway, we're going to uh, start admitting some people here. Wait a minute, what's wrong here? Why is my... Oh, why is this different now? It's uh, It looks different than it's looked before. Let me see here if I can do this, and then I can move this out here. Let's see here. Wow, that, that, that's amazing. Um, I've, it, all of a sudden, Zoom has done things that have changed stuff. And uh, look at what we got here. Look, look. Just me? No, but you're on top of me. Oh, well, I'm, I'm on. Yeah. And I tried to make it larger so it wouldn't happen. Yeah, no, you're on top of me. And now if I add somebody like go oh, Brian Neary, here we go, it'll probably start being where like it's supposed to be, I guess. You know. Uh, yeah, see? Now it's okay. But what happens when I got to do interviews with people? <laughs> well, Lori wasn't on top of no, you. No, she was fine. Yeah. You know. Um I don't understand it. Anyway, here comes Josh Wheeler, Jeff you Stein, one time. and uh, Alan is with us as well. Okay. You kicked me out somehow. And, yeah, and it's only, it's going, wow, it's really, that's really strange. It's really weird. 
because the view. Or let me look here. View gallery. It's weird. Jeff Jeff came on, no problem, and he's center face too. It's very Multi strange. Yeah. Speaker. No <laughs> view. Okay, uh, tell Josh you. is in no. a different background there. That that yeah, doesn't different. work. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Gallery. Wow, it just changed the whole gallery. This is on. Oh, oh boy. This is, a is there an update there. today? Huh? <laughs> was there a Zoom update today? Uh, this was a, there was a Zoom update, a whole big new update uh, that like never before. <laughs> and um, I don't like this at all. I hate this. This is. You horrible. just hate Charlie being on top of you? Huh? <laughs> You hate Charlie being on top of you? Let me see some. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's different. There oh. we go. I got it. What I got to do is I have to I had to widen out the uh, um, the thing here. But we're we're now we're okay. I think. Okay, except this isn't wide enough to uh, get all the people in here. Let me see here. Let me just. There we go. Well, I guess that's the best we. I guess that's the best we can there do. I, I, you know, as I say, this was a whole new thing for Zoom. They, they, they changed some stuff. They changed where everything is and so on. And they go, oh, this is going to be the new improved Zoom. Well, no, not for me. It ain't. Okay, so hey, Alan, you Alan, you, you gotta have to move to the to Let the left. Let me see here. Left. I'm gonna have to do something here. I think I know what I can do, though. Yeah. That's okay, Brian. If you combed your hair, it might look a little more straight. I know. I don't know why lately. Uh, I need to get a haircut. <laughs> Zoom panel. Now we go here to. Uh, there we go. I move to the left. Go here, and then I bring I your this other left. down just a little bit. Yeah, I think there. Yeah. To make it smaller. There we go, and then we bring this up like that, and I think we got everybody where they should be. Okay, that took a while. Okay, there we are, I think. I'm just jealous, Brian. I don't have hair in the middle. You don't have hair you know, in the middle? You know, I was at the gym, and some guy yelled at me and said, nice hair. <laughs> I was bald, white guy. I don't know what to say. I, I meant to tell him, like, oh, well, your head is shaped nice, though. I'm trying to be nice. So. Okay, I think now we're okay. Thank you very much, Zoom, for fucking us up. You know, I never, you know, I, I shouldn't complain. Well, wait a minute. I, I was thinking it was free, but it isn't free. I pay 150 bucks a year for this thing. So it should be nicer, right? Plus, hey, at least your new, com your new computer's working good, huh? No, oh, it's working great, in fact. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think we're, no, we're not out of sync at all, you know? So we'll see how it works. This thing is just massive in power. Uh, so we are in sync. Yeah. It cost me enough, but, you know, with tax, it came to 6,500 bucks, which is the most I paid for a computer in years. Ah, uh, what are you going to do with the Shecky money? you got to spend it on yourself. Yeah, right. Well, this is what Shecky would have wanted. He yeah. would have wanted you to. There you go. Well, I, I, I would like to do with the money what he would do with the money. Like, you know, go on cruises. He mm -hmm. would do that with the money. Um, I don't know what else he would do with the money. You know what we've decided? See, what we got to figure out is we're never going to be able to spend all this money. All right? Maybe we will. Maybe we'll live to be 100, and I'll rue myself for even saying that, okay? But let's assume for a moment that we're not going to live forever. And a lot of that money may be left behind. And Marjorie kept saying to me, well, you know, we really should leave it to some kind of whatever. Whatever, uh, donation, donate, donate yeah. it to some good cause. And last night I was watching television, I suddenly realized what that cause should be. Donald Trump? The five of us. The five of you. That's exactly. I told you Marjorie call tonight. that, and she agreed with me. Oh, that's awesome. Huh? Yeah. The five of us? That's great. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway. Either that or Donald Trump. Huh? Yeah. So anyway, uh, I thought, 
I, I can't come up with an idea. Does anybody disagree with me on this? St. Jude's Hospital. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Have, has kids. anybody yeah. heard anything bad about St. Jude's Hospital? Never. No. Never. And I figured, you know, you, you give somebody, I, I don't want to give money to any of these, most of these causes, because administration fees are like take up 65 Fifty percent of the uh, the money coming in, you know, right. uh, pay five billion dollars to a, you know a president or a CEO. Or I, mean, I mean, I expect people to work at these places, make money, but not suck all the money out that could be put to good causes. So all I've got that's left for me to look up is how much of the St. Jude's money actually goes to administration and how how much goes to, um, you know. The, the good works, as it were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here comes Kevin now. Okay, we had him. Let's see how he fits in. Yeah, he fits Kevin, in. called too late, man. The, we're the fabulous five, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was fixing my tech issues. I, I promise. I was fixing my tech issues. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> so there's not enough to go around. Sorry, but we'll do something. Yeah. That's yeah, right. you know, there's a, um, like, every year, actually, sometimes more than a year, but I donate clothes. Same thing. There's a Sacred Heart mm -hmm. uh, down here uh, in San Jose that that take a hundred percent and they give those away. You know, a hundred percent. Not like Goodwill where they sell they sell the items and those type of things. Yeah. So I, I like I those never kind of give places the Goodwill. To, yeah, to donate that because they give everything away. They don't take any money for their for their whatever. Yeah. Why I always that? give to the local the local. Uh, you know, homeless thing, or there's this my father's place that does a local homeless and what's stuff like what's that. What's wrong with Goodwill yeah. in particular? They only have like a fifty percent. You know, they they, they pay their CEO like <laughs> one point five million a year or something. Screw that. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah they, they sell it back. They sell it back to people who need it. I'd rather wait for that or wait for some kind of you know the fires or something and go oh. up and donate mm. them to the people i don't who mind if somebody like saying i don't consider administrative costs like at saint jude's paying for doctors for instance and surgeons and people like that every time a saint jude's commercial comes on i just say take my paycheck take my check take <laughs> really, my check really yeah, and what i like about the ads is they don't give you these kids with weepy looking eyes and stuff they mm. try to show you kids who are joyful because they're getting better you yep. know? But those weepy looking eye people were, were the first one was uh, Tony, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, you can feed a hungry child or you can turn the page is what he was. Uh, yeah, you know. One of the places that I know that are very good, it's the Children's Hospital in Boston. Really? And they do a lot of development of uh, videoing everything that they've done. Yeah. Okay, and they have all kinds of, they only focus on kids. And all over the world, they send videos to other little countries and other places, even in the United States, because they don't have the experience in all the kinds of specialty problems that kids have all over the world. But all the doctors don't necessarily have that kind of skill from that. But... The Boston Scientific Place just focuses on that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah they, but there are good places, but you really got to look carefully yeah. at them. Yeah. What's the name yeah. of the place you're talking about again, Alex Shriners? Me? No, 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 no. no, no. Saint, Saint Jude's Jude. Hospital. Saint Jude's. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I and you went, can look them I, up. I you, went to Saint you, Jude's you, Hospital with uh, Shecky. Yeah, he told me, Alex. I actually do on my eBay auctions. I told this to my mother always did St. Jude's. I still get the letters. So I, on some of my eBay stuff, you can click donations. I do ASPCA. I do St. Jude's. I would donate like a certain percentage of it. And they send it right to it, the cause you want. Really? That's, yeah. That's cool. My mother always did that, so we, I kept it going for some yeah. of my stuff. Now, Goodwill, on the other hand, I felt has uh, never done a good advertising campaign. That's what their problem is. And I came up with a great one for them, and I suggested it. And I don't know why they turned it down. Uh, but it, it was a very simple state, kind of a, yeah. a, you know, a low, a, what do you call it? A, 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 
a jingle. What, what's the term we use? A slogan. You said you liked slogan. advertisement, didn't you say that? You said it was yeah. a great slogan. Yeah. It was very simply, "Why not drop your load in our box?" See what now, I'm I don't saying? know why That's they didn't saying. go for that. <laughs> it's a little off color. <laughs> I knew it had to be dirty with this guy, but it's not bad. It all depends where advertising, right? Is that really what it is? Your load in our box. <laughs> I gotta yeah. get a coffee. Every, every like, weekend that I go to San Francisco and have cigars oh. with my old working buddies. You know, from from law enforcement, um, I take items that I no longer want, clothing and stuff, and I take it to a homeless encampment first and drop it off. Very nice, very nice. You're a good man. You're a good man. Uh, one, why do you while. smoke cigars? Is there some kind of phallic yeah, thing involved creepy. with that? Huh? It's, a, it's that's a, creepy with with the white vans. So you pull up in a white van and tell people, oh, come here, I got something for you. Is that what you do? Now I get out and take it to them. Oh, okay. and he's got snicker bars. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin, <laughs> for the, the extra ones. <laughs> DoorDash sent him a dozen, so he sent them to me to pass out. Well, look so. who's here on a, a on a on a, a, a what do you call it on a weekday night, not a Friday. There's Josh. Hello, Josh. How you doing? What uh, what's what's new with you? Nothing really new. So you're not working tonight. No, well, I'm I assume not. you're not working tonight. Uh, yep. Yeah. So that's good. That's terrific. Third week in a row. Hmm? I guess. I said it's the third week in a row. He's been on Wednesday and Thursday. It's uh, re it's nice. It's yeah, refreshing. but that means he won't be on Friday because right. he's working. Right. It's a new yeah. schedule he's on. So. Yeah, that's why he's getting all the big bucks. <laughs> Do they work you overnight at, on on uh, on Friday? Yeah, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. Really? What time? And what time do you go into work? I go in at six p.m. and I leave at six a.m. Twelve hours? Yep. Gee, well, get me a job like that one. What the twelve hours? I'd be crying by six. <laughs> I'd be crying by six. <laughs> Look, damn. Uh, how much of those six hours are spent with you putting your feet up on the table and doing nothing? Well, it just depends what's going on. Sometimes none. You know, just never know. No, because the thing I argue about a lot of hours, you know, with jobs and things like that, <laughs> is yeah. how much do people? How much time do people actually put in of hard work in a given eight-hour day? Say. Hey, Alex. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I used to work overnights, I was like 19 at A&P. We used to have to unload the whole truck. So the store would close at 12. Maybe we worked four hours. We just used to listen to our music. Once we packed everything out really quick, we would just eat bologna sandwiches and listen to music. Oh, gross. I mean, if you really get it done pretty quick, because the store was locked up. Nobody really cared. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. yeah try, try, try doing the, putting your foot up on the dash. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you somebody who had, had some kind of umpire work today. Charlie. But you were? Because he's falling asleep. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, did you, did you, the you northern like part that? of the state is getting wiped out by tornadoes. And he's <laughs> yeah, you're up, right. And he's no. umpiring. What was the weather <laughs> like today there? It was cooler. It was only 88 today. Yeah. Well, cold really front did go through, but we didn't get any rain in Austin. 61 here. Yeah, it was nice today. I liked it. It dude. was very nice. We took a Marjorie and I took a walk up the street. Yes. I only take about a half, quarter of a mile, three quarters of a mile walk, but it's yeah. enough. Hey, Alex, how were your allergies Sunday? Mine was terrible. I was terrible. walking by the park. Just terrible. I couldn't. I had that itch in my throat. My sister had to get me water. I said, I got to get out of here. Well, sometimes said. when we're walking, you suddenly feel the pollen hit your throat. Yeah, I, I could not shake it, Alex. Yeah. I had to go home. I said, after that. Really? Yeah, she had to get me water. I had to like drink it. I said, I got to get out of here, man. I said, it was, it was just bad. Yeah. Have you ever tried an allergy pill, Tony? I have them, but then they make me drowsy. I don't like try, to take them. Uh, try um, uh, Flonase. Flonase? If you go to Costco, they have an equivalent of Flonase. It's much cheaper. Okay. And, I was just thinking uh, it's, uh, it's basically, uh, it, 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 you won't get drowsy with it. There's okay, no I'll try it out when I'm back in there. It's a, it's, it's a steroid. It is so. a steroid, isn't it? Yeah. Is that bad yeah. for us? No. Oh, okay. Oh, I mm -hmm. use it every day. 
Really? Yeah, during Although it, I find that after a while it doesn't work anymore. I also have you tried yeah. Zyrtec, Tony? No, I actually my sister got me Benadryls that they work. I don't know. Ben oh, Benadryls are the first generation. Oh, Benadryl puts you to sleep. Right. Yeah, Alex, she I, gave I, me those I once. I conked use, out. I used to use that as a sleeping pill. Oh my I gosh, she gave it to me. My brother says you got cold. What'd you give him? I was I'm totally zombed. Yeah. God, no, forget right. Benadryl. Do not do Benadryl. Unless you really okay, no, I stopped it. I couldn't do it anymore. Unless you've got a cold or something and you really need it for your sinuses. No Benadryl. Yeah, I, I stopped taking it after that. It was just totally. My brother said, like, "What did you give him?" I says, "I was just totally sleeping on the couch." Also, it's not good for your prostate either. No, mm -hmm. well, oh, that's too late. Well, that ship is passing. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no it's, it's, it'll it'll really? um, it'll it does impact your prostate. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. You know what I found out? I was you know I've got this neuropathy, right? You, you know, said my feet hand, are right? numb and stuff like that, and it affects my balance and so on. So I'm trying to do some little exercises for it. But I, I watch these things on YouTube that tell you what to do for it, you know, little exercises and whatever. And this one woman said, here are some drugs that are bad for neuropathy. And it looks like my entire medicine cabinet. <laughs> you got to, what, what's the choice? Well, no, I mean, like my, my pergabalin, that's one I should yeah, like, take. Yeah, and, that's uh, Gary Lewis. Uh, 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 what, what is it? Amlodipine. I shouldn't. What pay. is that one you do? And I mean, you, they go on, and I'm looking at the list, and it's like, God, I'm taking most of these things. You <laughs> it's know. like a shooting gallery, man. <laughs> yeah. So it sucks getting old, man. Yeah. Um, it does. But uh, anyway, and they always say don't do drugs, but as you get older, they want to keep you alive with it. Really, it's like yeah, a double-edged yeah. sword. <laughs> so, uh, anybody have any uh, any theory on how this uh, Trump thing is going to turn out? <laughs> No. I'm figuring hung jury. What do you think, Jeff? Well, I think that he's got so many different things. What is it? Twenty eight? No, problems? thirty he's thirty what is it, thirty seven, I think? Yeah, it's crazy. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so a whole bunch of them will be thrown out, okay? You know, nobody will agree, but there's got to be some of that number. There's got to be six or seven that are really yeah. powerful enough. Well, to it's got to be enough to be able to find him to be a felon. Okay. Yeah, we just want that to be on his collar, yeah. What? You just want something to stick. It's like he can't be the Teflon. Well, I know this crowd is hoping, you know, for that. I got yeah, my money on yeah. <laughs> draft games. But he's gonna go. He's gonna. He's gonna appeal the whole thing, and he of probably course. won't win on appeal. You know, it's very hard to. Am I right about this, Josh? It's pretty hard to win on appeal. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. I mean, you really have to prove enough to be able to get to appeal your the verdict. Yeah, I, I don't know what the stats are. Uh, I've heard before, and I can't remember, but. I want to say it's like 1% or 2% or something well, like that. Well, here's what Trump does ahead of time. He's saying it's a rigged jury. Yeah. They're, it's, they're all uh, de Democrats. It's going to be a phony thing. It's a fake. It's illegitimate. What if they he don't wins? have a crime. What, what, is it, what if he wins? Then it's all is good. Is it still <laughs> illegitimate? Is it still phony? Is it still, you know? Yeah. And everything. I just, I just wish that I just wish that the January sixth trial was first. Yeah, yeah. I said, this one's a garbage one. This one. Well, this isn't a garbage one because this is the only one where he becomes a felon. Yeah, yeah, but I just think that the January sixth is something has re really has something to do with being a president. You know. Yeah, but it may be too late before the election to have that have any impact on it. And do you really think that if they find him guilty, let's say, of the documents case, the J uh, January 6th case, do you really think that his people are going to abandon him, saying, oh, I can't have anything to do with him? You know. Um, did you, anybody see the speech? that who, Who's that documentary filmmaker uh, who did baseball and... Uh, oh, Ken, Burns. Burns, oh, yeah. Ken Burns? Ken, Ken Burns, Burns. Yeah. Ken Burns. Oh, yeah. He gave a um, commencement in, uh, uh, a speech, and I can't remember where now, but the speech was the only time he said he's ever become political. He says he tends not to want to become political 
because what he deals with is history and we're telling the stories of history mm -hmm. and trying to democratize education by letting people have a good look at something like what he's doing now is a whole series on the revolution for yeah, instance. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, he said, but he had to speak up. And his speech, if you can go online and see it on YouTube. I gotta YouTube, watch that, I like everything he does. I yeah. mean, it was just, he just said, you know, our democracy yeah. is in jeopardy. There's no question about it. He has no doubts about it. How are you, Josh? Do you have a doubt about that or do you, do you feel we could survive a Donald Trump uh, term in office? Well, I always feel that we can survive, but I mean, there's it's certainly it's a large threat. I mean, it's a real thing. I mean, it's hard to ever believe that the unbelievable could ever really develop or happen here. But I'm also not so you know naive or stupid not to recognize you know the threat of something like that that's legitimate, you know, and that's real. I mean, it's it's certainly in our national best interest not to ever have him serve in elected office ever again. I mean, the sooner he goes away, the better, so that this can all, you know, go away. We can get back to just having problems and issues without mm -hmm. the violent rhetoric attack and the you know the the or you know attached to it and the nonsense about you know hating people that don't agree with you and you know forget their feelings and all that i mean i don't ever dismiss the 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 feelings of people who didn't agree with me about certain things in the past i mean i i might have thought that a person that wanted to you know privatize social security was incredibly wrong or whatever but i never got to the point where i wanted to come home and hang up a sign or a flag that said, you know, fuck that person's feelings or, you know, whatever. I mean, I don't know how it got to that point. Or I mean, I, I, I do know how, but I don't know how. You know, it got to that point because of him. But he also led people on that were already, you know, there. But as Americans kept that from coming out and respected a process, you know, and, and I, I think that's the real threat. So it's being eroded, you know. It's, it is yeah. very dangerous, for yeah. sure. Uh, you know? Well, but, uh, you know, all things sometimes change with time. Mm -hmm. And if we lose this democracy, it's going to be our fault. Well, yeah. I mean, if we ever do it, it would certainly be our fault. You would have to. And, you know, sort of what strikes me as odd is, you know, look, I'm the type of person, apparent, you know, I would imagine that, you know, the Trump people would want to not have around, you know, just like Stalin's people or whatever didn't want to have people around to share the opposite point of view or to be uh, willing to do open dialogue or academics and scholars and things like that. But what strikes me from my knowledge of history so funny is that there are a lot of people out there that think, oh, even if that happens, I don't mind because I'm good to go. I'm safe. I'm one of his people. And it's like, are you really that naive? You, you all really think you're in his club and that nothing will ever happen to you? How quickly things change, you know, you don't realize that one day you'll think that and the next day you'll be in one of their little prisons or whatever. You know, I mean, well, that's, you know, people, though, I'm sure there were people who didn't fear Stalin because they thought, well, Stalin will never have me put anywhere. I'm good to go because I like him. I agree with him. He got so paranoid. You know, he had, you know, if he wasn't, you know, the safe bet was to, if, if I'm not 100% absolutely positively sure that this guy's on my side, the safe bet is to put a bullet in that guy's head. <laughs> that's, that, I mean, that's where the paranoia goes. Oh, his, uh, he, the amount of people that died under his watch are incredible. I mean, millions, yeah. literally yeah. millions. Right. But that doesn't mean that a Trump can't do that. I mean, people are saying, well, well, you know, it's only going to be four years and whatever. But the fact is, this guy could make it into a, whatever his lifetime is and then also pass it on to his progeny by simply passing things while he's in office. I mean, it just, yeah, it's so, right. so ridiculous. I mean, our institutions are only as good as the people that are in those institutions. Well, right? I'll tell you something, though. I have said something in the past uh, that uh, I used to get a bad time for on the radio when I said, 
Make no mistake about it, we're living in an illusionary democracy, that it's not really a complete democracy, you know? Uh, and I never felt the feeling that I was living in a democracy, not when I saw things going on when I was a kid, like the House on american Activities Subcommittee, for instance. Yeah. You know, we had an illusion of a democracy because this was the democracy at work. This were members of the, of the it was a Congress in that particular case, who were mm -hmm. holding these congressional hearings called the House on american Activities Subcommittee, and they were ruining people's lives just by implication. You know, and, and so I never felt great about America after that happened, and after I lived through it, as a young boy. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, so, I think that if we want to live up to being what we believe we have and being a true democracy, we really have to work at it. And quite frankly, we've gotten a bit lazy. We're well, willing I to agree. say we're willing to say, okay, Mr. Trump, take us, take over for us and keep us safe. Keep yeah. our economy right. Do all yeah, that, you know, you know and lie to us while you're doing it. Each time that we had, you know, these kind of incidents and setbacks. Uh, communism, scare, house, you know, on American activities, etc. We got through it, and then we came out on the other side of it in a in a more positive way, and kept our arc of freedom and democracy trending upwards. Maybe slowly, but always upwards, right? But the the you know the problem is that despite that, mm -hmm. as we slowly trended upwards, sometimes we get to places, you know, like we are now where we're really recognizing a lot, almost anyone's, you know, ideas and thoughts and theories, which is good, but, you know, all these arguments that we're having about how people should identify and their gender and all that. And I get that some people have some objection to that and everything, but I guess my point would be, and I'm not even really telling you how I'm feeling about that as a personal issue, but I'm just saying as a, as a whole, when you look at those things and you have those kind of things be recognized, there are some people think that we've gone too far and that's off the map. And as I'm saying, I get it. But the alternative to having it that way is where freedom is curtailed, right? Right. You know, house on un-American activities. Are people gay? Um, you know, I mean, would you rather have that? Or would you rather have a little bit of overextension the way that we kind of have it now, including everybody and those kind of things? And maybe some of that stuff is going too far. That's up to each individual person about whether or not their workplace or their local area is taking it too far and, and all those. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, if you take if you come back from that, it doesn't take much to slide just a little bit too far to the other side of it and start not accepting people who don't look, feel, talk the same as you right. and then quickly dismissing them. And that's how we ended up you know, in, in those spots. Right. right. Better than, you know, I know it's better than the alternative sounds like some sort of saying or cliche or whatever, but listen, it's better than the alternative, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. You know? Well, I, I just don't know. I just think that uh, if we lose our democracy, I blame the people. Jared B. Is wait, has entered the waiting room. Well, we'll definitely blame us. Hmm. Let me do. Let me do this. Let me put my p face up. Okay, there we go. And now we'll try Jared. And everybody, get ready to close your eyes if it's something really disgusting. <laughs> Here comes Jared B. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, Jared B. No, no, no. Okay, I'm going to remove him because he's not saying anything or doing anything which of course is always incredibly oh, there, oh, there it is go. there it is there it is they got so, a lot of time on hands. huh they got a lot of time on hands. i look like tony huh no sorry <laughs> did you get my text tony oh i i didn't check my phone i gotta check it's upstairs okay no problem no rush okay yeah. i'll check later Alan. after the show okay Oh, by the way, you know, Kevin sent me sent me some blueberry jam. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, lullaberry. What, what's it called? Oh. Oh, lullaberry. A lullaberry. And Marjorie can hardly wait to try it. She has, like, toast and jam in the morning, so she's going to try it someday this week. But look mm. great. 
two jars of it. Mm. But it, it came labeled, and it kind of almost looked professional. And I didn't know who it was from. I thought it might have been from Kevin. Kevin's always said, I mean, not Kevin, but uh, Alan. But Kevin, uh, mm. Kevin sent this to me, and I thank you very much, Kevin. A very nice gift. I appreciate it. I forgot to put the note in. It ended up on the table. Oh, oh, that's why I didn't know it was from. Whenever I get a package and it's to Alex Bennett, I know it's from one of you. So, mm. anyway. Mm. So, um, uh, let me see here. I just think that we are, you know, it's just how I can't just can't wrap myself around the fact that let's say for a minute that I was like a proud boy. Okay, I've got my guns and I'm really mm -hmm. strong and I'm a man and I'm a man's man. And all of a sudden you got what this guy coming thing? out of the courtroom saying it's too cold in there. <laughs> I mean, He's not a I mean He's like me. how do you how do you hold up uh, to that? Uh, Somebody you know, give me my mittens. <laughs> I'm cold. Give me my mittens. I'm too cold. It's, it's too cold in there. He's not a man. They That's like somebody, me. They had somebody <laughs> actually go in with a thermometer and report back <laughs> yeah. to Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, I like that when he did that. The thermometer said it was 72 <laughs> degrees in there. Perfect temperature. <laughs> yeah. My mother used to put the heat on at 68 oxes. Don't raise it. <laughs> oh, cool. he, he was farting. He was farting to keep warm. Was that it? No, you have to I light so. it. You have to light it to keep warm. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then he's excluding methane gas. You know. Yeah. Well. Uh, He's so spoiled, Trump. Can you imagine him as a baby? Like he was always probably blown a fit. Well, yeah, he just has Bitch. a he, he he. I'll tell you, I don't know if it was his father who gave him the attitude or Roy Cohn. Who do you think it was? If Cone. he had Alex, you he's talking to Kevin. Kevin, you think it was Cohn? Cohn. Yeah, I mean, his father was, was a pretty it, big shit too. Yeah, his his father yeah, started yeah. it. Cohn they, just lit the fire. You know, poured yeah. gas on the fire. That's all. Yeah. He was the one that told him, don't ever admit you're wrong. Mm -hmm. no. Never admit you're wrong. Which to me is sometimes the best way to get out of an argument. You know? How many of you with your wives? Mm -hmm. Well, you wouldn't know Tony. and you My wife does it to me all the time. Well, Josh would know, and, 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 and Brian would know, although he's not married to his significant other. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how many times... Have you gotten into an argument and you just apologize and said it's my fault? I'm wrong. Just to get, just to stop it. Every time. Just, every every time. Time. just every to stop time. it. Falling on the sword. I just did it a few minutes ago. <laughs> did yeah, you really? Cool. See? See? <laughs> Fuck it. Whatever. So to never admit you're wrong is a bad tactic. It's the easiest way to win your argument. Yeah. I guess that's why I'm not married. Huh? I guess that's why I'm not married. He doesn't. He doesn't fall on the sword. He makes her fall on the sword. Oh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, but um, I think it works. It's just stuff. amazing. Whatever it's just, works, right, Brian? It's just amazing that we've gotten to this point. Okay, yeah. it just doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, what have you? I don't know. So anyway. Oh, this you know you'll hear okay. something on, uh, might be next uh, Friday's Bubbles, but I said something, or maybe it was one after that, but we were uh, 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 talking about drugs, and he doesn't do drugs, and I used to do them, but I don't do them anymore, but we were talking about uh, marijuana and so on and so forth, and he talked about hashish. And I thought, I mixed hashish with a thing in Morocco called keef. And I thought he was talking about that. And I couldn't remember what was the drug in Ibiza that, I, that they always had. That they, whenever I come in, whenever I go to Ibiza, they say, do you bring any marijuana with you? Because they were so sick of, of hashish. What is, is that then? Very heavy. Huh? What is that hashish then? What is hashish? It's another form of cannabis, but it, it comes yeah. in a brick. Concentrated. It's concentrated, yep. yeah. Then Where have you been? Have you been under a rock, Tony? No, I I Tony has kind of. been under a rock. There's no question about yeah. it. Yeah. Alex, you know what I'm enjoying immensely? Breaking Bad. Whoa, what a show. 
Yeah, yeah, okay, but it, it, it's about yeah. another drug. All the day junkie day. just overdosed the girl. I was like, oh man, she's from oh, the mall. Did you ever do it any? Never, th- Tony. It never gets bad. It's good all the way through. Yep. No. Well, I never did anything, Alex. No, you never did any kind of drug. No, and I can't count when I went to that Metallica concert where I actually had an inhale you, that marijuana, you, which gave ever, me a headache. Did you ever drink? I occasionally had a beer or two, but I didn't like it, and I no. Okay, so that's not really drinking. No, I was like, gonna, like if you went, if you gave me something, you took me out to say, Tony, try this champagne, my brother, or beer. I take a little bit, and now be it. And you never did, you never did uh, um, um, uh, cigarettes. Nope. The number, nope. the number one over the counter drug. He does it every day. It's caffeine. Yeah, I'm doing that right now. Wait, yeah, uh, uh, no, you're fucking yeah I actually, I hated, I hated you smell never cigarettes. You never did pot. You never did pot. No. Never did. Pot. Oh, I swear, I never did anything. Never did coke. Nope. What kind of life are you I'm totally clean. I can't believe And you're this way naturally. Wow. I couldn't sleep for I mean, I knew people who did, but I didn't care. It's like it never bothered me, really. I was just like, no. They never would bother me with it. He's not going to do anything. I know that, but I mean, what did you do for fun? Well, you didn't do it. Actually, I like playing sports, basketball. I like to work out. You know, I listen to music. I went to a lot of concerts. bring this up. We just saw a video of what he likes to do for fun with the little vibrant. Never mind. Well, wait a minute. Uh, 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 I, I hate, I really shouldn't bring this up. How about sex? Yeah, I've had that. Believe it or not, I have. I can tell you. How, be- how many believe Your Tony right is hand that doesn't sex? count. I swear to God. Here's my right hand. Here's my right hand now. <laughs> I even told Shecky. He called me. He almost fell off the bed. He says, get out of here, yo. He says, you got to tell Alex. Says, he would never believe it anyway, I said. <laughs> I don't believe it right now. Okay. I swear my mother made she rest in peace when she used to drive. My mother met her. She came to my house once. I'll never, that was another story. I'll tell you another time. But how much was it? <laughs> no, it was actually free. I actually worked with him. So <laughs> He was laughing when I told him the whole story. He says, she went to your house? I says, yeah, she thought I was cheating on him. I says, he goes, what? I says, all, all, the, all the women Tony had were uh, uh, under the My same mother got mad at me. So I said, no, I didn't take her because I had to take somebody else to the remotes concert. And Anthony, she you brought that stuff. hooker here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got in trouble for that. I, and I didn't even do anything. She, you know how mothers are. I said, you don't believe this. I didn't even do anything, I go. Oh, okay. What was the joke I heard on a on a roast for Roseanne? I was watching all these uh, uh, roasts that that uh, Gilbert Gottfried had done, oh, I like and him. Gilbert knew how to do a roast. He took no prisoners, and one of the jokes he told at the Roseanne Rones roast was: a farmer comes home, and he's got a sheep oh, under I his arm, that. and yeah. he says to his his wife, uh, he was saying. Uh, I, uh, I I I recently fucked this pig. Oh no! He did. And his <laughs> wife says, "But you have a sheep under your arm." He says, "I wasn't talking to the sheep." Oh, that <laughs> oh. is so fucking bad. That's a bad. Alex, did he always talk with that voice, or was that a stage? I always wanted to ask you. That. He had that voice, but it wasn't uh. that. Was uh, it a stage, Alex? Then. Yeah, I mean the voice he used on stage was, it was more of a character voice, but it was. I always wanted to ask that without spoiling it. His own voice was a lot like that. It was, then. I never wanted to know the whole thing, but I was curious to actually. Like, I always wondered if you talked to him, if he actually acted like that with the voice, because I liked the voice. You know what I'm saying? No, and he I mean, would we, talk we, him, we'd be like talking how he would at a party, like and he'd be he'd be t- he had kind of had it. You know, he couldn't. He have had it, it then, that yeah. Was his voice. But when he put it into that shouting mode, no, he didn't do that at a party. I like the story you tell, Alex, where you were on one side of the street. Yeah, in Manhattan. And he was on the other, and he goes, Alex Bennett, you're still alive. <laughs> yeah, Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm you got the clip. I'm I like that clip, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Alex <laughs> Bennett is still alive? <laughs> oh, he was He was good. I miss him, yeah. Oh, I yeah, love that. He was, he yeah. was great. He used to hold that to what Look up some it? of his roasts. He has no filter and no. He seems like a really nice, alcohol. genuine person too. Here we go. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried, <laughs> and this is the show that O.J. Simpson was driving home to listen to. Alex <laughs> Bennett. Yeah. Does not you hold that. that up. That's one of the, yeah, what did you say, there. Kevin? I said, if you look up his roast, he does oh. not hold back at oh, all. Oh, no, no, it was wonderful. And he gets, he, I mean, he makes, 
He'll make anybody. Yeah, it's some bad stuff. <laughs> He, just, he played an accountant. Well, he, he, and, told, and, he told this joke about uh, Pamela Anderson uh, uh, meeting up with a genie. And oh. she said, I can get, grant you any wish. And she said, please make the show I did called VIP a hit. <laughs> and the genie says, I'm very good at these kind of things, but that's something I just can't do. That and, was terrible. Is there, <laughs> is, there an, is there another wish? She said, yes, I'd like you to make my vagina smaller. <laughs> Jeannie said, "Let's look at that VIP thing again." <laughs> That's what. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go on YouTube and, and just bring up Gilbert Gottfried at roast because those yeah. roasts in for Comedy Central were kind of weak there. ass until he got up uh, there. Well, and then he t it was a roast for Donald yeah. Trump. He said, oh, no. Donald Trump, a man who can give you all the expertise he has about going out with Eastern European sluts. Yeah. <laughs> I think he called them whores. Oh, he actually called them whores. Whores, yeah. yeah. Oh. And, and, of course, oh, Donald man. has no sense of humor. About no, him. I would imagine. I don't know turned why fucking he blood red. A, I don't know why he sat for a roast. Yeah. He did? Oh, that would, that would be... The, the correspondence dinner, right? He couldn't even get through a correspondence, yeah. Well, the yeah. correspondence dinner, yeah. when uh, Obama, Obama went after him. him, that was the very minute they said he decided to run for president. <laughs> that was a, who wrote those lines for Obama? They were good. And he delivered them he, nice. Oh, he's a yeah. great... There is no better... He's one of the better comics in America, yeah. Obama. He's great he's at doing, doing jokes and the timing that goes along with him and the takes that he does with him. He's terrific. Yeah, he's smooth, Alex. No, I mean, yeah. I remember watching that. I was like, holy shit, he's really good. Yeah, no, he's excellent. He's excellent. But, Just but, go back to an Obama, any, any, any Obama speech when he was president, and then you'll see, oh, my God, what have we been doing these last five years? Yeah. yeah, but people will say horrible things about Obama, and it's basically because they're racist. You know, yeah, I, because was the best. Obama, I actually think he was better than Clinton. Obama did a yeoman job. He wasn't a great president. He wasn't a bad president. He was just a president who watched over the country while he was in office and pretty much kept it out of trouble. All right? Uh, and it's the same thing that's happening to Biden today. I mean, Biden is, I mean, I have my qualms about his stance with Israel and the way he's handling that. But aside from that, all these arguments that, oh, look at how bad the economy is. What do you mean? Have you looked at the stock market? It's doing Don't look a today. This week. Don't look today. <laughs> I mean, granted, I lost five thousand dollars today. Yeah, but I'll make it back. But I'll make it good. back next week. You know. But but he, like Trump, had nothing to do with the stock market. Really, he had nothing to do with stock market. No. Oh. But I mean, you can't blame. You can blame lack of jobs on him. You can blame, uh, you know, <clears throat> a lot of different things on him. Uh, but to say that he's a bad president because the price of bacon went up, he has no control over something like that. Or the price of gas. He doesn't have control well, over that. Well, if people want to get together and price gouge, they're going to price gouge. And, you know, I mean, I suppose he can make a law of sort. Can't, what, can, what can he do, Josh, about the economy outside of appoint the right people to handle it? Well, I mean, right. Just, I mean, his own authority, not a, a lot. I mean, he's... You know, he's supposed to work among the branches of government. I mean, he can propose laws and, you know, send them to Congress, get them signed, get them passed. And, you know, he got the Council of Economic Advisors who help shape and make policy. But, I mean, Congress makes policy and makes laws. Uh, the administration he doesn't have Congress, make policy in some ways, but... Well, what's Congress going to do for him? Nothing. Well, correct. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, his authority's pretty, you know, fairly limited. And then in political reality, it's even less so, you know, depending on the time and the president. You know, I mean, FDR was able to do a great deal for the economy because Congress basically just did what he said, well, right? I mean, yeah. you know. There was, I, I saw a thing today where they said it looks like the Democrats are going to win back Congress. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. Yep. Yeah, yeah they but, should. They'll have control of the House then. Yeah. So if, uh, it, does a Democratic Congress... If let's say Trump becomes president, 
Does yeah. the Democratic Congress do to Trump what the Republican Congress did to Biden? I would if I were them. Well, I'd block him. I mean, do you want to have a country that's always in a stalemate because they're against the guy who's in office at the present time? You know? <laughs> no. No. Yeah, I don't want it to be like that. But, I mean, if what he's proposing is, you know, nonsense, then they got to stand up to it and say no. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, mean, I disagree with you, Alex. I think Obama and Clinton in my lifetime were the two best presidents. They were two very good presidents. In my lifetime, it was, of course, it was uh, Theodore Roosevelt. But and Abraham <laughs> Lincoln. Don't forget about him. Now, Lincoln wasn't that good. Yeah, <laughs> he was good at speech making, but he wasn't that good as a president. You know. No, no. Uh, Would have never made a good boxer. No, he but take uh, a shot to the head. <laughs> In my oh. lifetime, who was the best president? I, I have to kind of give it to. Um, I have to kind of give it to Lyndon Johnson. Really? I mean, he <laughs> did. He did a lot. He probably he got shit done. Huh? He, yeah. he well, he passed more civil rights legislation yeah. than any yeah. president in history. Yeah. You know, and 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 the the things he passed, we feel today. I mean, all the civil rights stuff. My God, he was a great president. And nobody expected him to be. Trump wants to reverse all those, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess you can, but what's the sense in it? You know? I mean, I'm reading, uh, how, how is giving people a, civil book. rights as, as something that's bad for the country? It's only bad because those darkies will get the vote. You know? <laughs> I mean, excuse me, Charlie, I didn't mean to use the term darkies, you know. I've heard worse. <laughs> you've heard worse. <laughs> What's the worst you've ever heard? Oh, there's probably nothing. What's uh, the... You're not going to get me to say it. <laughs> <laughs> you might get demonetized, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Porch monkey, that isn't... Uh... Nah. Is that close? <laughs> <laughs> I think the sad thing is... When's the last time you've heard something bad? That's the thing. Yeah, I think those use use those words on for other people too. Absolutely, three of us here are Jewish, and every yeah. once in a while we hear anti-Jew stuff. Does kike bother you? Kike doesn't bother me. They're just words. You know, it doesn't bother me. me. While I Most was a people cop, people them. would say nasty things about my mother and. I didn't care because they don't know my mother, you know. I what I I'll tell you what bothers me uh, as a Jew is when I hear somebody say something that indicates that we have a lot of money. <laughs> well, I don't know. Between they used to always say, "Oh, you're you, a Jew." Jeff and I were doing pretty good, right? Huh? Between you, Jeff, and I, we're doing pretty good, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we okay, only, well, it, oh, hey, we get together because we control the whole Western economy. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Especially Jeff. Do, yeah. do you need a cook, Alex? You know, I I'm a very thing good about, cook. You know, Jew, all, Jew, all Jews are rich. Yeah. And I looked at my father and went, Dad, when are we going to start being rich <laughs> around here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really? That's what I told my mother, but we're getting We were an all Jew. Alex, family. Go, into, go into radio and become famous. What? Mm. Make a lot of money. I made more money than my father ever did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I still wasn't rich by by rich standards, you know. I mean, I didn't make $100 million a year like Howard Stern. That's crazy. Um, you know. Yeah, that is crazy. One of these days... Yeah, one, one of these days, Sirius XM is going to quit believing that Howard Stern does them any good. When it comes he to really making makes a hundred million a year now. Yes. Yeah. They're paying a yeah. hundred million a year. Gosh, I mean the guy's an idiot to me. I can't believe they well, actually pay well, that, him. That's not the point. You pay somebody what they're worth. I think he ceased to become worth that. I think they could get rid of him tomorrow and you know, ten people would stop Alex listening Bennett to Sirius XM. Um, but they're in trouble anyway. They're losing people like crazy. Yeah. They lost like a quarter of a million people last quarter. I hear uh, Alex Bennett will come back for a hundred thousand a year. Yeah, sure. sure, <laughs> sure. Um, I, well, I offered to work for free at one time, and they took me on. So you can see how much they think I'm worth. You know. Is there subscribership going down? 
Yes. That it went down, I think, a quarter of a million in the last quarter or something like that. Wow. A, a huge dump. And their wow. t- their stock market, uh, they're only about $2.75 right now. Wow. They were up in the $5 yeah, range, well. weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, they started out but just before I got there. Maybe they we were at uh, sixty dollars a share. Sixty? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. then they started. I didn't know they were ever up that they high. They started going down and down and down and down. And then I was there at a time when they went down to five cents a share. Yeah, they were going to. They were going to take them off the board. I thought. Yep. I yep. And what the happened board. is, um, Mel Carmison got some people to back him yeah. and to save the company. And he uh, he saved the company that way, and all of a sudden the stock went up. I wish I had bought ten thousand dollars worth of oh, stock yeah. at five cents a share. Yeah, yeah, I would think about buying their stock because I don't think they're going away, and you know I think they'll it'll come back up. So I don't know if it's going to come back up. You got to remember something. How modern is satellite transmission for radio? Well, but I mean, they're they're big mm. in the digital game too. But so I don't, they I, never, I don't think they're out of. They never got into the digital quite as strong as they put all their money and time and effort into the satellite mm. delivery. Mm. I mean, so I listen to lithium too sometimes, and I've heard you know a couple of their DJs bitching about. Well, we're going AI. I'm sure we're going AI, and I'll have a great time underneath an overpass when they do. But you know, I'm looking forward to my new st- my new life. But, you know, that stuff is going to happen probably. And, go and AI? You know, what do they mean go AI? Well, the fact that they're not going to be any DJs. They're just going to run yeah, everything on computers, AI. and there won't be any people there. They're just going to run shit on, you know, once they get AI figured out, they're going to have, you know, robot voices, just like they have he, the robot everything else, you know? Yeah, you know everything song, is all on, it, it's digitized well, now. That, that's doable for disc jockeys. Right. Yeah, that's, and that's what I mean. Doable for disc jockeys. Talk uh, channels won't have that problem. Right. Right. They won't yeah, be able. To, yeah, they won't be able to have interactive anymore. conversation. But <clears throat> what, what talk? What talk do you want to hear anymore? Jeff, well, I like to talk. Jeff, you got, to Jeff wants to say something. Yes, Jeff. I think a lot of people are going to work who have a job, but they don't go to work other than maybe two days a week. Yep. And, well, and they work at home. Yeah, that's true. Now, it means that that costs them less cars or less transportation, uh, getting lunch at yeah. a restaurant, whatever. Tremendous economical changes. And... I don't know. Is if, it good? If, if, yeah. Well, if, if a lot of people aren't, work, aren't uh, uh, commuting to work, they don't have any need for satellite radio. Yeah. Right. You know, they don't I have any need for it. AM, FM radio. They just, uh, all you got to do is there enough podcasts out there for you to get every piece of information you want off a podcast somewhere. You know, and I hate to say that because I love radio and I think it's a wonderful form of broadcasting. But, you know, I have to admit that podcasting is probably going to be the only place you and podcasting will eventually disappear and give way to something else and who knows what that's going to be but it's just uh, sad because there's really no control of that shit and that's where really all your is. garbage well, the comes trouble from. With, the trouble with podcasts is there's nobody there overseeing them right it's all it could be garbage it could be good yeah that's true. yeah and and there's nobody saying hey you can't say that because it's not true you know and you've got to prove this uh, there's no vetting going on right a podcast so that a person could say almost but we anything have that and get now. away with it. what we have that going on now yeah we absolutely do hey well we got our theme song playing here mm-hmm. and uh this has been another one it's been a nice night a bunch of people yeah. and, and by the way i want to say that in the entire show we have not gone out of sync how about that yeah. well, it, it only cost me sixty five hundred dollars to not go out of sync what that's right I said it only cost sixty five hundred to go out of. Well, I say sixty five hundred. Excuse me. With ta- that's with the tax. Anyway, everybody, thank you, thank you to Charlie, thank you to Brian, thank you Jeff, thank you Josh. Uh, I hope we see you here again tomorrow night. I guess, yeah. Uh, and also a thanks to uh, our good friend Alan and to uh, uh, Kevin, and finally to Tony. 
who's practically a virgin. Uh, anyway, everybody, okay, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. That's our that's our people who do, do the uh, uh, the uh, uh, citizen panel, which you can do by calling us as well, as long as you don't show some dirty pictures or something. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll see you again uh, tomorrow night, same time, same. St- uh, by the way, stay tuned for uh, Amy Manuel. She's here with the intersection next. We'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, of course. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.